thing that you talk about, no private thoughts, <coughs> is you have to kind of understand some metaphysics underneath that in order to take it from being a rule, to take it to being a guideline, to what's beyond the guideline. How does no private thoughts fit in with the metaphysics? <coughs> and how it fits in, I would say, is that uh, a private thought is one that would be kept secret, that, that couldn't be freely shared with everything and everyone. So, if you look at Jesus, for example, he's probably a great example of the best example of no private thoughts, because he's hearing only one voice in his mind, we'll say, the Holy Spirit, and that one voice is a blessing to everything and everyone. So everything that's going to come out of his mouth, every gesture, every smile, every glance, is going to be for the whole cosmos, uh, because the Holy Spirit is the voice for God. You know, it's going to be an expression that way. And metaphysically, when you start to understand how things work, that, that Christ is an idea in the mind of God. So really, I and the Father are one, you know, it's just saying that we're the same spirit. Jesus wasn't God. Uh, he was just a good, we could say almost like a, a symbol or a manifestation of the Holy Spirit, as if the Holy Spirit could be acted out in form. And basically, ideas leave not their source means that, that Christ remains in the mind of God. That's what heaven is, is remaining in the, the mind of your source. And in heaven, every thought is freely shared. So, in creation, God gave everything to Christ. Creative ability, love, happiness, joy, perfection, oneness, I mean, everything was completely shared, and there, there was nothing kept back. God didn't, like, share 99.9% .9 and say, well, actually, I'm going to hold on and retain this one thing. But nothing was retained in heaven. Everything was actually expressed and completely given for eternity. It wasn't, there was no sense of holding back. It's just this, we call it extension. Everything is totally extended in, in creation. And in this world, the parallel is, is that if you would know the holy instant, if you would come to live in the present moment, you must have no thoughts that are for you alone. In other words, every thought that you share with the Holy Spirit is a thought for everyone. So there's no secrecy needed. Uh, Jesus, when he reached the state of enlightenment, he never had that thought in his mind about, like, a doubt thought, like, I wonder if this is gossip, or I wonder if I should be saying this, or I wonder if I should be saying this about so-and-so, because everything that he was thinking and saying was coming from the source, you know, from, we'll say, the Holy Spirit. So it didn't have to be kept hidden in private, because the Christ mind is aware that there is nothing private. So. Our first guideline, we'll say, there are, there are no private thoughts, we'll say, means there are no private thoughts. Literally. Uh, because only the thoughts of God can be shared, a private thought is an, is an attempt to keep something apart from the mind of God, and from the mind of Christ. And that's impossible. Even that. Actually, because the whole world is reflecting that thought. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. From an egoic perspective, if, if yeah. you seem to have a private thought, then the, the whole world that you perceive will reflect that back. That sense of doubt, insecurity, secrecy, you know, the, it's like if you put on the ego's glasses or you put on the ego's lens, which is a lens of private thoughts, you will perceive a world of privacy, of secrecy, of doubt, all the things that are blocks to the awareness of love's presence. So, the first thing I would say is, that, yeah, we really, we don't, um, we don't use it as a rule. In other words, it's never come to a point where I've, I've ever had to say to anybody uh, in the messengers, you know, you have a private thought that you haven't shared, and now you're going to be excommunicated uh, because of that. You think you have thoughts. <laughs> yeah. If you, it 
thoughts. There's never come to a point where you, you, you have a, a threat of being excommunicated because of the private thought. Now, if the private, no private thoughts was a rule, that would be a good way that the ego could misuse for basically a threat or for an action that's, that's based on, you know, saying you're out, you're excluded. Um,